Welcome to another episode of the W Series Breakdown, where this time we broke down the Hungar Hungarian Grand Prix for the W Series, where it was a very fun race. I do these live as well on Twitch, over on the Overreact Gamer channel, as well as of course here on YouTube on the Overreact Gamer channel as well. If you do enjoy this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. Always helps me out. And now, without further ado, here we go. Welcome back to another episode. Uh, yeah, okay, so we are unmuted. Welcome back to another episode. This should be a very fun one. I'm going to try to get even more in-depth than I ever have on this show. We're going to get more drivers' reactions than we have before. I thought it was a good way to do that. What drivers were saying over Twitter after their races. And that's something to really, you know input into this because we want to get as many drivers reactions as possible to understand what they were going through in that race because when we do read and break down the article that w series gives after the race breakdown that they do they only talk to the first piece well the podium to be exact so they'll talk to alice powell jamie chadwick and belling garcia i believe that was the top three then we'll be able to what Fabian Volvin had to say, what Abby Fooling had to say, what um, Emma Kimmelainen had to say, what Baby Tuesday Note will break down. We got an interesting article also to, to read that's off of that one driver and just different things to really break down and it's going to be fun it's going to be a blast we're going to have a good time and well, let's get this started so yeah, let's get this started and I thought it was gonna come on sooner, but it's not. There we go. All right, so let's, let's get going. Let's get going on this. It should be very fun, really, or it will be very fun to break down. And we start off with, of course, Kind of just breaking down this race in general before you read the article, seeing what we did see. And this was big. I kind of called it, not ne not necessarily calling it, but I said there is a good possibility that this race starts under safety car conditions instead of going straight to race conditions. And that's a major thing, and as in nearly you know, line up five red lights and then lights out and away we go. No, the, they decided to start under safety car conditions due to rain the evening before. Rain, actually, I take that back, not the evening before, but in the morning. It was a wet racetrack. They opened it up showing that it was uh, wet on the racetrack, but all the drivers seem to have started on slick tires. And even before they got going. Even before they got going off of the start, there was a minor incident. One car did end up spinning out. And just right at the start of the race, for Martha Garcia loses her back end. And then they finally go in racing five minutes into the race. And you could already tell, yes, the sun was shining, but there was still a lot of wet racetrack around, you know, the outside. You go off that racing line, there's a chance 
that you are not going to be able to control your race car. But right off the bat, Powell, Vister, Marta Garcia, who were the ones who were still on par to try and get a good finish. This driver's trying for a couple of passes. Jamie Chadwick, she was one of the biggest movers of the day. And what I mean by the biggest mover of the day, basically, starting in fifth place, her worst starting spot in a long time, but was able to move up the field and right off the bat after around the first lap, she was in fourth place trying to battle. And then, of course, midfield battles happened and both teammates were battling each other. And, well, sadly for Nede Amarthi, she got the worst of it. And Bell and Garcia was able to stay where she was. Take that back. Don Garcia actually fell down to 12th place. But both of those drivers, they had a good starting spot, but lost a lot of positions from their contact. And I mean, I'll go back to it and I want to break it down even more and see what exactly sparked that. They just went side by side. One, I think just, yeah, she... Went in too hot, hit the brakes, and was already turning. And already you can tell the back end was loose. And so she tries to save it. So it's like a slap, to be fair. It's like one of those slaps. So you're trying to control that tank slapper. And sadly makes contact with her teammate. Teammate goes spinning and one of them is able to save and continue the other one not able to. And that was Nerea Marti, who did, who had a fantastic starting spot, who gets bumped down. Bell and Garcia down to 12th as well. That was the other Quantum Fury racing team, team teammates. So both of them from Spain, sadly not having the best race due to some contact. But again, we move forward. It was around 21 minutes and Jamie Chadwick was able to move up the field a lot more. And it was just very interesting to continue to watch this race and to see how everything kind of took place. Again, Jamie Chadwick moving up already was into the third position from starting in fifth. And meanwhile, down the line in the race, Bustamante... Hits the back of the wall. Damages her race car. But no safety car as they continue racing. Fast slap a little bit further along. The race was Alice Powell. Powell was trying to keep her lead away from Visser. As Visser gets passed by Jamie Chadwick in second place. So bites of Visser able to keep that position. And gets a good third position. Good third place. Chadwick was trying to catch. Jamie Chadwick was. or Sorry. Chadwick was trying to catch. Alice Powell. 0.716 was that gap on the final lap. Chadwick was just a little bit too far away. The biggest thing though. Visser gets third. Or was able to keep third. Martha Garcia and Abby Pooling. Were trying to battle. And right as you know. Abby Pooling's right there. Fabian Volven, her teammate of Marta Garcia, was behind Abby Pulling. So Pulling knew that she had work cut out for her trying to get, or just basically trying to keep that position. If she doesn't keep that position, then she would get moved down to, well, moved down to sixth place and not able to get important 10 points. Remember, the gap coming into this race for Abby Pulling and Visser were three points. It was a 70-point gap between her and the leader, uh, Jamie Chadwick. So that was, of course, big coming into here. Why we were kind of shocked that, well, Jamie's in fifth place. If Jamie Chadwick does not have a good showing here and Visser or Abby pulling do and end up maybe winning the race, all of a sudden you're looking at that top two and it's a pretty 
it's pretty much a almost cut in half per se so that's kind of what people were thinking about and the biggest thing though at alice powell apr able to finish the race gets first place second place chadwick third place mr fourth place martha garcia and fifth place abby pooling so you have a top three on the on the top step of the podium, like we said, Alice Powell, Jamie Chadwick second, and Bites Kavisser in third play. Bites Kavisser started in second position, loses one spot to third. Alice Powell starts in first place and, well, was able to... Well, was able to keep that lead and win. Jamie Chadwick starting fifth. And puts up a recovery drive into second place. Which was her first time this season to be knocked off the top step of the podium. Still has another podium. So her podium streak continues once again from at least Austin. Where she got the double win and then continued on her victories throughout this season. So... Good job for all three of those drivers. When we look at the rest of the field real quick. We'll do that very quickly as we move on. So the race results are as followed as we mentioned the top three. Were, well, Alice Powell, Jamie Chadwick, and Bites Confisser will get into the top three in points here. As we all know, Jamie Chadwick still leads, but the top three, or well, more than just the top three, will move back actually. Not a lot of change happened through that final lap. Martha Garcia ends up fourth. Pulling ends up fifth. Volvin ends up sixth. Moore ends up seventh. Eaton ends up eighth. Juju Noda ends up ninth. Thomas Selly, tenth. Eleventh was Chloe Chambers. Twelfth was Belen Garcia. Thirteenth was Nedia Marti. Fourteenth, Jessica Hawkins. Fifteenth, Babakova. Sixteenth, the Hughes. And Emma Kimalainen does not finish the race along with Bianca Bustamante. Both having failures with their car, both wrecking, and were not able to finish. So both of them out of the race. But again, 16 finish. De Hughes, the last one out of the drivers who ended up finishing the race. Babakova, 15th, 14th, Hawkins, 13th, Martha. Nettie Marti, Belen Garcia, 12th, Chloe Chambers, 11th, 10th was Tomaselli. And the biggest mover, Juju Noda. Noda gets the driver of the day as well. She started 13th position. I know we just jumped straight into the race. We didn't even break down where everybody was starting to. But Noda to finish 13th was, or to, to start 13th, to finish 9th, huge she comes she will come back into the w series next year due to the fact that she is in the academy program which makes this so much better that every single race is just an improvement for this young racer that's what as fans we want to see that's what media wants to see that's what teams want to see how can you start to improve at such a such a young age coming right out of karting into this Formula 4 car and then coming right out of the Formula 4 car for about a season or two and jump into a Formula 3 car. No no DRS, but it's a whole other level where there are drivers that are almost double your age, double her age to be exact. You know, drivers, a couple of drivers close to to 30 years of age in this series and yet you got a couple of 16 year olds 16 year olds 
that are able to score points, try to move forward, and, you know, they're coming right at... They, they might not even have their license yet, their driver's license <laughs> at their age, which is mind-blowing, mind-boggling. Again, we started to see this trend almost where drivers were able to make it further along the line, at least in the United States where I live. Um, so, you know, the likes of Haley Deegan getting her license, winning races, being able to be in k and to the truck series into the arca series and things like that and now we're starting to see that trend a lot more happening even around the world not only in nationally which would be in the u.s so it's super cool to see that these drivers being able to well really not only take this seriously but be able to perform when necessary that's what we want to see now Get into a couple of drivers' comments after this race here. Um, yeah, there's not much else to say. It was a very... It, it was still a good race. It was still a fun race to watch. But I say it again. Our, all I sometimes look for when I'm watching this race are... Were there good battles? Yes, there were a lot of good battles. Were there drivers who shocked you? And meaning, were there drivers who were able to perform better than you would have expected for your expectations? Definitely. And then drivers who could have done better but weren't able to? Yes, shocking for a little bit of the start and things like that. So, all in all, a good race, a solid one. It, I still think, you know, we're kind of... Uh, measuring these off of the first race of the season, which or the first two races of the season, which were insane uh, at Miami. So France definitely is up there. And this one, it's about mid-pack, but it was still a fun race to watch. And the racing's only getting better and better. And we don't have a lot of races left. It's the summer break, and it's a big break for these drivers that might this might only be their series. We have um, Singapore up next. And that's in 62 days at least. Absolutely insane. 62 days because the W Series is not going to head to Japan. They are not going to head to Monza Spa. Um... Those are really the two tracks because then after that, I believe, is Singapore. Then after Singapore is should be Japan. Then after Japan should be Circuit of the Americas. And after Circuit of the Americas will be uh, Mexico. They will go to Circuit of the Americas and they will go uh, find their way to uh, Mexico. That's at least their plan. We could see a change. But as it stands, all these races that are on the schedule are expected to happen for the W Series. But I say this because it's a big break, 63 days. What are these drivers going to do to spend this summer break that, you know, normal F1 has up until the end of this month, I believe. So they have about a month off. And then the right, the F1 drivers and F2 and F3. But then it's the next series or it's the next one after that or the next two races after that that they don't go to so what will they end up doing which how many of these drivers will be able to stay fit and stay focused on their big goal how many drivers might potentially slack off we've seen it before with athletes in general with the off season they come back and they're a little bit sluggish than they should have been or if they're but i expect all these drivers basically as i'm talking nonsense I expect all these drivers to be back after this summer break and after this long break, better than they were before the break, too. So it's going to take a lot of discipline for these drivers, even in the summer break, To I've seen a lot of drivers already, or not a lot of drivers, but it was a good amount, who were invited to go to Wembley. Absolutely amazing. And we'll just take a time out of talking about the W Series here to give our congratulations to uh, England women's national team for winning the UEFA Euros over Germany. 
And the last time that it happened was 2009 for, or the last time that those two teams played in the final was 2009. And, well, England ended up losing that championship. But point moving on. Very, very exciting. So again, going back to racing now, let's see what all the drivers really had to say from this race weekend. We will start off with... Chloe Chambers, the American. What did she have to say? Tricky conditions out there today. Pace was on fire, having a fastest lap midway through the race. I was battling for P7 until the last lap where another driver made contact, dropping me down a few positions to P11. Two months until Singapore. Two months until Singapore. Really... The broadcast didn't show that there was contact made on that final lap. I think they were busy focusing on the top two. So there's really, I guess, unless people were there live, where we really didn't see any contact made. And it's upsetting. That's P7. That, that is four points. Four points for not only the owner, owner's championship, but for Chloe Chambers to show, hey, I'm... I'm improving and it's showing on paper too. It's not just from where like I where you know Chloe Chambers seals comfortable. It's where she can literally say, "Look at this. I can compete. I can compete with these drivers even though it's my first time at a at this racetrack." But yet she gets taken out again. This is not the first time where She's had bad luck and has been spun around, battling for another position. It's very frustrating to see, and I'm sure it's even more frustrating for Chloe Chambers, which, I mean, sinks because she, as well, is fighting for a spot next year. If we look at where everybody is after these races, I believe it might be top 12. Don't quote me on that. It could be top 8. Actually, I believe it is top 8 because two of them would be Juju Noda and Bianca Bustamante coming back. So the top 8 of this, you have... Martha Garcia, Emma Kimmelainen, Nadea Marti, Belen Garcia, Abby pulling now in fourth, dropping down a couple of positions due to a top five, and Visser and Alice Powell being so close behind the week before them being able to overtake her. So bites Visser ahead. Of her in third with ninety, well, with sixty-eight points, it's only a three-point gap there, and then tied for second basically is Bicycle Visser with Alice Powell because they are both with sixty-eight points at one hundred forty-three points for Jamie Chadwick with her blistering start of the start of the season, uh, being undefeated up until this Hungar Ring race. Maggie Arnagadich, we all know what Jamie Chadwick said the first race of the season she said that was a gift for me but now we're starting on pulls in the second race she was able to dominate that one and win by a long time and then same deal 19 seconds in Silverstone and just being able to really show that well she's she's better than the field <laughs> and we can get into that rant all that we want to but I won't today about her basically not belonging in the W Series because she's too good for the W Series, but not being able to be in a Formula 2 car or a Formula 3 car at least. 
at most, of course, Formula 2. She shouldn't automatically be. She shouldn't automatically be an F, F1, is what I'm saying. <laughs> it's ridiculous. She, she wouldn't be able to compete for a while because she would be out of an F2 whole thing. But my point is, yeah, she, you know, too good for the W Series, deserves to be in an F2 car, and deserves to be showing that she belongs to be, to have a chance to have a spot in F1. But she can't show that if she doesn't get the opportunity. It's just like a job. You need experience to get a better job. But if you can't even get experience, then it's tough. It's that whole pattern. But moving on again, we go off to the next time. And the next couple of drivers that we will not only talk about, but read their quotes from this weekend. So this was able to get the onto the podium, so we'll skip her until we go and read the article. Abby Pulling. What did Abby Pulling have to say about this weekend? Actually, she did not say anything about this race weekend, so I'm wrong about that. thought she did. The next one, then we'll just go to Sarah Moore Racing. Sarah Moore, what did she have to say about this race weekend? Uh, All smiles after that race, heading in the right direction. Great clean and close battle with Abby Eaton, 44. Finally managed to get past after she made a mistake. Didn't have long enough left to catch the group ahead, but another points finish. Yes, and that's all that she wants to do, being able to get those points to be able to stay in the W Series, to have that chance to compete once again for another championship. And looking at the way that Sarah Moore has been able to race this season, it's been consistency has been has been key for her. She's been able to get multiple good finishes, not amazing finishes, but really good finishes, and it's worked it has worked out for her. This race showed it once again. Being able to have slick conditions, mixable conditions to be exact. And she showed, hey, I'm right here. I have a chance to not only finish well, but if I can keep up this consistency, who knows where I'll be next year for my next step. And just things like that, showing that she is consistent, consistently bringing good finishes. And that's especially as a driver, as a driver coach, just everybody around her that supports, you know, that supports her. That's all I can ask for. Ask for. It's being able to be better than the last race that she did. I'm more than a 100% sure she will be back on the podium. Everybody will have to start from ground zero, basically, because they don't know what to expect when they go to Silverstone, especially with the race cars, and especially given the fact that, well, the only driver that's technically been on the race circuit, I believe the announcers were saying it was Bianca Bustamante in a go-kart. So they didn't do you know, the whole track, but she's been on the uh, track. She's been on the uh, circuit as because of a go-kart, which maybe she got to walk the track when she was little. Don't know. Point is, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in 63, 62, maybe 61 days from when they will have that race. Either way, Sarah Moore, very happy with her finish, being able to have a couple of battles. She said last week when she was able to, you know, done with France, she said, that was the most fun I've had. Not because, you know, I was on a podium or anything like that. Not points-wise, but because of the battles. The battles I was able to stay, 
you know, stay with everybody. It just she, she just said, yeah, I had a lot of fun there. So coming into this week, she said all smiles again. <laughs> this was fun. Finally managed to get past my teammate. Didn't make a mistake after she made a mistake. Didn't have long enough and things like that. So she's looking forward to that next race that she will have a chance at. And we'll go to Fabian Volvind. Uh, that's it for the European leg of this season. Great recovery after a difficult qualifying yesterday. Finished 6th and collected some important points for the championship. Excited for the summer break. Looking forward to come back strong in Silverstone. So yeah, looking forward for her. Come back. She finished behind Abby Eaton like we said. Abby Eaton finishes behind Fabian Volvin's teammate. Marta Garcia, who ends up finishing fourth place, fourth position. And what does Marta Garcia have to say about this race? That's a wrap. P4 in today's race. It was a tricky race. I was running with the wet setup, so I struggled a bit all over the race with pace. Even though good points for the championship, keeping him Improving is the most important is most Im- is the most important for me. Okay. See, so yeah, I put it on that wet setup because and I was keeping an eye on this. I if you don't follow me on Twitter, Jacob Young456, because I was keeping an eye on the weather all throughout the evening, Friday evening to be exact, keeping an eye on it, checking if the storm was going to get there in the morning or was it going to get there a little bit later to where when the race started it would be almost a downpour and even models were showing for a while there on that Friday evening that it was going to be so bad that they might have had to cancel uh, F1 qualifying and move it bump it to Sunday that's how bad they were saying it was going to get. Well, I kept an eye on it, and the storm kept moving, and it kept, kept getting bigger for a second, and then it weakened. And it weakened so much that it, in the morning, it just poured down rain, and that was that. Um, after that, it was just a wet track. Wet, um, that's why the FIA and F1 just wanted to make sure that when the W Series race went on, that the track had a good dry line to where they did not have to stop the race and make everybody switch on to wet tires. It was dry enough for them to go racing, and they allowed them to go racing off of A, none other than um, a safety car restart, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Green flag off of a rolling start. There we go. That's the correct terminology was a rolling start there. They were able to go green off of a rolling start, which meant that a lot of drivers would be up to speed more and all that fun stuff. They still started. I No, they started. Uh, everybody started behind each other. So it was a single file start to the race. It's very interesting for sure. But Marta Garcia deciding to go for that wet weather setup was a risk that it seemed like was the right one at the time, especially throughout the day. Um, seeing how it was supposed to be the night before and then seeing how it was supposed to be in the morning when it didn't look like anything was going to lighten up for a while. They got a lot of rain, and all of a sudden it was good. They raced. They had no problems. I mean, Martha Garcia almost spun out at the start but was able to Keep her speed, keep the position, keep everything. Gets a top four, gets a top five actually, scoring 12 points for the race weekend. Moving on. Another driver that had something, some things to say. I believe was Abby Eaton could be wrong here.
But yeah, not much. Yeah, not not much else to say. They didn't really say anything about the. Yeah, I didn't say anything about the race. So again, we move on. And Juju Noda really didn't say anything about the race either. So that just means the next thing that we will do. I know this is a little scuffed right now, but just trying to find that flow. The next thing that we will do is we'll kind of break down the top three. See what they had to say about this race. And so once again, your podium was Alice Powell, Jamie Chadwick, and Bites Kavisser. And that was a huge podium for Bites Kavisser because she comes back, she ties Alice Powell on points at 68. And now the best of the rest competition gets even more fierce with only three points separating both Alice Powell um, Fabian Volvend and Abby Pulling because Abby Pulling sits on 65 points. So this was posted yesterday, July 30th, 2022. Still don't know who writes these articles or else I would give them credit. But this is from the W Series website. Alice Powell held off Jamie Chadwick in a nail-biting sixth race of the 2022 W Series season at the Hungar Ring to take her first win of the year and end her compatriot's long unbeaten run. A day after securing her first pole position of the season, Alice controlled the race from the front and ex expertly negotiated two safety car restarts to win the fifth W Series race of her career. Despite seeing her perfect start to the season and seventh race winning streak come to an end. Jamie's second place finish extended her run of W Series podium finishes to 13 and stretched her lead at the top of the championship to 75 points. Alice's victory, her first since September last year when she won at Circuit Zandvoort, Netherlands moved her up to second in the standings level on points with Bites Kavisser who finished third for her second podium of the season. So back-to-back -back podiums for uh, by Tufusser, if I'm not mistaken, or not by back-to-back. -back. I take that back. Take back what I, what I um, said, because it's not back-to-back. -back. Podium is actually. But Marta Garcia recorded her best result of the season in fourth, having survived a late onslaught from fifth-placed Abby Pooling who is now fourth in the championship, three points behind mentor Alice Powell, with four races remaining this season. Yeah, they forgot to mention not only three points behind Powell, but also three points behind Vice Commissioner, because they're tied on points. That's a big thing to mention, is being tied on points. So a very, very crazy uh, race in general. Heavy rainfall. Oh, wait. Yeah, I skipped one thing. Uh, Fabian Volvin scored points for the fourth straight race in sixth place. She was followed by Sarah Moore and Abby Eaton, although the teammates were being investigated after the race for overtaking under the safety car. Juju Noda and Bruna Tomaselli completed the top ten. The former scoring the first points of her W Series career in ninth. Heavy rain fell throughout the morning, and although it had stopped by the 1440 CST start time, the track surface remained damp, and Saturday's race of 30 minutes plus one lap began behind the safety car. All of the drivers started on slick tires, and as they strove to find grip on the first lap behind the safety car, Nadea Marti spun at turn 10 and collided with a marker board before regaining control and returning to the track. So it was Nerea Marti. I'm sorry. Uh, listening back to the broadcast, it sounded like Alex Checky said,
Yeah, so Alex Jacques on the broadcast, this is why I said it was Martha Garcia, said it was Nidia Martha, or said it was Martha Garcia. This now, making it official that it was not Martha Garcia, and it was Nidia Martha almost colliding with the wall and colliding with that board. So, with the heavy rain, fell through out the morning, all the drivers started on slick, yep. And Marty spun at, at turn 10 and collided with a marker board before regaining control and returning to the track. The safety car pulled into the pit lane with 25 minutes left on the clock. And pole sitter Alice Powell retained her lead from Bites Confessor on the opening l- corner. Martha followed the leading pair, having been promoted on the formation lap due to Nidia's error. Medea's error. So that's how Martha Garcia ended up getting into fourth position. So that was Nidea's error, who she got sent back already. So this makes more sense as to why she was near Belen Garcia at the time and why the two ended up colliding. Or not why exactly, but why they were near each other for that collision to happen. In the first place. Uh, Jamie overtook Nidia for fourth at turn three. And Abby followed her past the Spaniard. Who made contact with Bell and Garcia two quarters later. Relegating the teammates out of the top ten. That incident was being investigated after the race. In support of the Formula One uh, Magyar and Nagidic 2022. So again, before we continue on, just want to clarify once again, watching that replay, watching what happened, simple as just trying to get on the inside and the track still being damp, having less grip, hitting that brake. You could already tell that the rear was starting to come out of place. And when she did, she tried to correct it and she did, but it was too late as, well, you're trying to chase the car up the racetrack. Well, who's up the racetrack? Somebody who you're battling with, so you're most likely going to make contact, making contact with that. And, well, one of them moving on for the most part unscathed, the other one spinning back and only losing two positions. Uh, Alice was under pressure from Bites Kavisra at the start of the next lap, but managed to retain a slender lead of less than half a second. Jamie moved into the top three with a third of the race remaining. When she overtook Marta and now in clear air, she started chasing the leading pair and set three consecutive fast slaps to close to within a second of leader Alice at the halfway stage. Jessica Hawkins had progressed from 10th on the grid to 6th before contact with Emma Kimmelainen at turn 1, dropped her out of the points, and caused the leader, the latter's retirement. Shortly afterwards, the yellow flags were waved in Sector 2 where Bianca Bustamante spun into the barriers at turn 9 before lumping back to the entry of pit lane where she stopped due to, damage, due to the damage caused. Up ahead, Jamie went later on the brakes and bikes Kavisser at turn one before pulling off the overtake for second place on the inside and making the move stick through turns two and three. Alice and Jamie traded fastest laps to be separated by one second as the race moved into the final 10 minutes. When the safety car came back out to allow Bianca's car, so the safety car did come out. I forgot about that. So when the safety car came out to allow Bianca's car to be recovered, there were less than five minutes to go when the safety car period ended. Alice put the hammer down and early... Alice put the hammer down early, and that gave her a lead of half a second over Jamie as the drivers crossed the line. Jamie had halved that advantage midway through the following lap, but ran wide at turn 11 to allow Alice to regain a lead of half a second. Alice had extended that by two tenths as they began the last lap of the race and kept her cool on the final circuit of 4.381 kilometers and 14 corners to take a deserved victory. 
Yes, Alice Powell finished off her deserved victory with around, well, yeah, two tenths because she did kind of slow down when we decided to side. But before that, she was up just under a second, uh, 0.718, I believe is what the graphics showed at one point right before the final lap. Here's what she had to say. Alice Powell said, I was lucky to do some filming with the crowd earlier, and it's amazing, so thank you for the incredible support you've given to all of us. The atmosphere is great here. It's so good to be back on the top step. It's taken longer this season than I would have liked, but to get Bristol Street Motors there with their first win in the championship is amazing. Every single person on my car has done an incredible job. So a big thank you to to the team. And what did Jamie Chadwick have to say? It's roles reversed from here last year when I beat Alice Powell. If anything, if anyone was going to break that winning streak, I feel like Alice is a deserving person. I did what I could today. The wet conditions helped early on because it's a really tricky circuit to overtake on. But at the end, I didn't have enough to challenge Alice. I'm still happy with second place, happy with the the race, and I go into the summer break really pleased with how the season has gone so far. So... We're going to break down what Jamie said here because it's interesting to note. I understand Jamie was being nice, but this can be taken out of context and context. And this can be, you know, really met. It's not the best thing to say. And what I mean by that is when Jamie Chadwick said, said not the rules reversed part. When she said, if anyone was going to break my winning streak, I feel like Alice is a deserving person. Is Emma not a deserving person? Is, you know, was if Abby had, if Abby Pooling had won, what, what was Jamie going to say then? Point is, I just feel like that could be taken out of context and people could say, okay, so is this driver not deserving? This driver wasn't deserving to win this then if they had. Unless that's just what Jamie was going to say in general. And I think, you know, I'm definitely over-speculating. But you can de- you can do that. You can over-speculate this comment because it just feels like she could only be saying that because it's Alice. If a rookie were to be on the top step, what would Jamie have said then? That's my point. I think it's still the same thing. But we don't know. Jamie says, Alice was definitely deserving of winning that race, considering she started on pole and finishing first. But the way that Jamie worded it is very interesting. Jamie Chadwick wording that, saying again, if anyone was going to break that winning streak, I feel like Alice is a deserving person. If anyone was... She could have said this. If anyone was going to break that winning streak, I'm glad it's Alice. Or she could have not said that at all. And she could have said, congrats to Alice for winning this race. She outclassed me today. I think that's better than saying if anyone, you know, I feel like Alice is a deserving person to break my streak. Because then you can speculate and say, well, then if Bites Kavisser wins, I don't think she says that. That's just, you know, that's the speculation going on. That's all my point is to this whole thing. But we move on. What does Bites Kavisser have to say about her? Third place, her podium finish to get her, to keep her in third, 
but to tie second place to bring that pressure to be like, hey, I'm right here. Don't forget about me because I can definitely win this. Um, this championship almost too. So what does Bites Convincer say? She said, it's amazing to be back on the podium and to see so many Dutch fans here. Again, this was in uh, Hungary, which I've looked at the distance from Hungary to the uh, Netherlands. It's a good distance. People have to fly to get here. But besides that point, um, it's amazing to be back on the top step of the podium. Or it's amazing to be back on the podium. I just see so many Dutch fans here. It was a very good race, and I'm very happy to be back up here. We were on wet set. We were on wet setup, whereas the top two were on dry setup. So early on, I was quick, but then the track dried and it didn't work out. But my pace has been good all weekend, and I'm looking forward to carrying this into Singapore and the rest of the races. If I can continue this progress. I'll have a strong end to the year. What did Dave Ryan, the racing director of W Series, have to say about it? It had the potential to be a pretty awkward situation this afternoon with the weather doing all sorts of things, but we planned for a few scenarios, and we were prepared to change things as we went into the start procedure, which we did. It worked out fine, and we ended up up with a very good race there were a few silly incidents during the race which i think the drivers will look at and say they could have avoided but put that to one side and it was a great race i i have to disagree with dave ryan here with a couple of things looking at a couple of incidences yes Bianca's a young driver. She just got out of line and, you know, it's experience with the race car. She lost it a little bit and it hit the wall. In wet conditions, we haven't had a lot of wet conditions this season. And, again, coming right out of carts, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough. With that being said, the incident with Belling Garcia and Nadia Marti, they were going side by side into a corner. That's notorious for making cars spin out, not let alone that the track would be damp. Yeah. Marta Garcia losing it off the start. It was a damp racetrack. I think she might have been trying to warm up her tires, but point is, it happens. <laughs> My thing is, yeah, no, it happens. This is what this series is about. I think Dave kind of forgets this. They're young drivers trying to move up in the ranks and don't have as many ex don't have as much experience as per se an F two driver. And this is a perfect place to make mistakes. Then let's say, I don't know, a Monaco. <laughs> you know, a place that has a lot of walls. And it's a good series to learn from. And I think all those drivers that made a mistake yesterday will learn from it. Simple. It's what this series is about. is to make them improve. Dave Ryan saying there was some silly incidences? Sure. But they're young drivers. Remember this, Dave. They're still kids. Most of them. Bianca's young. Juju's young. Chloe Chambers is young. Belen Garcia's still very young, too. Same with Nadia Marti. Martha Garcia, yeah, she's getting up there. But again, experience in a race car, I would say plus hours. Point is, or not Martha Garcia, sorry, but Nadia Marti. Only her second year in this series. I 
It is a possibility we could see a big shakeup. We go back to what I said before. We'll list down the top 10, top, you know, yeah, the top 10. And we'll tell you who's staying at, as it stands. And who would be on the chopping block to not return next year. And that's why those three points, I'll go back to it, were so important. So very important for Chloe Chambers to get, but she gets freaking, she gets spun out. We move on there. Uh, like I said, okay, so I thought towards the end of the right. Towards the end of that, I thought towards the end that Jamie Chadwick might pull it off. And while we all love Jamie, I'm so glad Alice Powell won. There was some really good driving. It was good fun and, enter and entertaining racing. The team did a really good job through difficult conditions today. A few drivers have had ups and downs during the weekend. But we got there today, and everyone's okay. I agree. For the first part of what he said, I would say, no. He's a little wrong on that. But at least he said we had good racing. <laughs> at least he finished it off by saying this was still a good race. And him being a little biased is kind of funny. But at the same time, I think that's what we all uh, wanted to see. We wanted to see somebody else on the top step of the podium because I think all the fans, especially, even Jamie Chadwick fans, I think, would say this championship's kind of boring that she's taking away or that she's just running away with this. We get another first place person, all of a sudden, kind of gets a little exciting. Let's say Jamie Chadwick doesn't win uh, until. Maybe the final race in Mexico. Let's say she stays on the podium, though, for all these races. Mix in a couple thirds and seconds. Let's say for Singapore, she gets third. For uh, Austin, she gets second. And then Mexico, she gets third. Well... think that's still enough for a championship but let's say that Alice Powell wins all three of those let's say 25 points compared to 18 and 15 remember two 15s so with the 60-point cushion, yes, I think she, you know, has it blocked. If she keeps that up, she would probably clinch the championship with that second place at Coda. There is a possibility she clinches the championship at Circuit of the Americas, even though it's 50 points for a chance to win. But, again, if she's up by 50 or more by... Or, yeah, she's up by 50 or more. She wins a championship. reason why she would already have won the championship even if she had 50 points is because she would win the tiebreaker of how many races she's already won this season. So the championship could be clinched if finished third or second at Coda. Second place, more than likely, they would say she's champion. Third place, they wouldn't necessarily claim, say that she's champion, even though she would win the head-to-head. -head. But that's just, you know, that's speculation, for sure. Speculation. But what more can you do? Um, 
And that's all for me from the W Series breakdown for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Hopefully you all did enjoy that video. It was very fun to make and hopefully you really got more insight into that race and everything that was able to go down in the end for that. Congratulations again to the top three, which were Alice Powell, Jamie Chadwick, and Bikes Visitor. I do these live again over on the Overreact Gamer Network. Follow me on Twitter at jakebyung 456 And of course, hit that subscribe button if you're new and that thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. Thank you very much. We will see you all next time. Adios.